Hi. We're here talking with Hannah Gross, Charles Pokel, did I get that right? Yes, sir. And Kentucker Audley of Christmas Again, Christmas Again, which is premiering here at the Sundance Film Festival. Um, congratulations on your premiere, first of all. This is certainly one of those indies with some buzz that's been talked about. Um, and it was also just announced for new directors and new films as well, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Good job. You're, what does it feel like to be on such a role? Did you expect it? No, I don't think we expected it at all. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's a really small, um, micro-budget film made by only a handful of people. And, um, you know, we, you, you make a movie like this, it's just um, a small family, friends endeavor, and you, you never know how it's going to play and if uh, people are going to respond to it. And this has been a really amazing example of some a small movie with the, you know, the spirit that people are responding to. Did you guys know each other before? Any of you? Um, I had met Kentucker briefly when um, his film Bad Fever was playing festivals, uh -huh. and Hannah I had not met um, until, yeah, I mean, I think she read the script before we met in person. Did you yes. have, oh, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. We, we'd met briefly. Yeah, we were, we were in the same network of people, and so, yeah, we know, knew of each other, and um, mm -hmm. I was very excited to work with both of them, just based on the reputation, having seen Hannah and a couple movies, I used to be darker, and Charlie had, has made documentaries, and really talented cinematographer and editor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had you, um, so how did they, was it a traditional casting process or was it kind of friends of friends and reaching out or did you have a, an Yeah, agent? it was a little bit of both. Um, our casting director, Elena Hendricks, was one of the first people to jump on. She's an actress too. She yeah. is, and she actually had acted with Kentucker in this movie Bad Fever. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, I found Hannah, um, a friend of mine, um, set us up and um, yeah, Hannah jumped on real early. Before we found the, the mail, we before Kentucky jumped on. I remember when they first read together, it was like, I think everyone in the room was like, this is it. Yeah, it's good chemistry. And you guys, see, you seem like you were kind of born for this part. So, when you, so Charles, let's, yeah. let's talk about what you did. This sounds like a really method way of creating a film over mm -hmm. the course of years. Um, you have a Christmas tree stand. In the film, there's a Christmas tree yeah. stand, but you actually had a Christmas tree stand for three seasons? Uh, this, I did it this year, and this is year of my fifth year. Your fish. So you went back. You did it again after the movie. Yeah. Um, wow. I just really enjoy it now, and I feel like people in the neighborhood have come to depend on it. So. It's, and that's in not? that's in Williamsburg, Greenpoint. Or Greenpoint. Greenpoint. Yeah. yeah. I bought my tree from you. Yep, and it did. Yeah. Nice. But uh, it's the same location like that we shot the film. Uh huh. So. And do you live in the trailer? No, I, I live like three blocks away. Uh huh. So. so that was already your that was already your home base. Yeah, I bought the trailer essentially for the movie and a place for my you know employees to stay warm. So what attracted you to this kind of milieu? Is that I the right think, one? yeah, I think when I first kind of realized that this thing went on in New York City where people are, you know, selling trees 24 hours a day, living out of cars, that... And when does it start? Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So you guys come in the middle of the night, you know, set up these incredible, they're almost like film productions and that, like uh -huh. they work real quick and get this whole thing up and running and then they're there until Christmas and then they kind of disappear and you don't see them again for 11 months. But uh, I hadn't seen a film that, that tackled that at yeah. all. So I don't you know. And you're always a filmmaker. I think you're always looking for you know some sort of environment or story that hasn't been seen before. Mm -hmm. I live in Brooklyn, and now I kind of want to go back. I want I want it to be Christmas again to go look at these people because I never thought. I mean, you know, you you walk through and the smell is so great right. when you when it comes out. You're yeah. as a New Yorker for a long time. You get to know that smell. Um, so in the press notes you say that in many cases the communities surrounding these tree stands look after the vendors. Yeah. Is that what you found to be the case? Yeah, like, definitely. I've heard stories of like um, people leaving keys to their apartments so these guys can come in and shower or something or like people bring them, you know, pastries or coffee in the morning. And the woman who uh, owns the, the house where we're in front of where we have the tree stand, I think every morning bring us like muffins and oh, like, coffee and sweet things. That's so nice. It's really cool, yeah. And you start to see kids like grow up and stuff, which is crazy. So did you cast any of the real life people in the film? Yeah, so Elaine are actually, all of our customers are either like street cast, or I think maybe a couple of them are actual like working actors, but most of them were, I mean, some were even customers. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the the fundamental thing about getting this movie right was to capture the personalities of the people in that neighborhood, and specifically Greenpoint, Brooklyn, I think it was very important to capture the atmosphere and to really um, hone in on a very particular part of New York and a very particular part of, of Brooklyn and, and to get those right to cast those people required a lot of street casting, required a lot of like, um, you know, people that had been customers previously and say like, oh, 
you bought a tree for, from Charlie Stan two years before, like, do you want to be in the scene in the movie this year? Mm -hmm. So just really making an authentic, you know, picture of, of this neighborhood and this tree stand. Yeah, absolutely, because that's, that's exactly what drew me to the project, was the real aspect. Yeah, yeah. how simple it was, but this glimpse into a world and, like, the people in the neighborhood through a lens that we wouldn't normally see otherwise. And how how much of the how much was of the um, screenplay was writ was there written is there a lot of improv did you tell these people you know you be a jerk on a Bluetooth you you yeah, know yeah. be really nice or did you just kind of let them do their thing No, it was um, entirely scripted. Okay, uh, I think Kentucky and I we rewrote a couple scenes like day of where we're like this just isn't that good. Let's see what we can do. But after we rewrote them, I think we stuck pretty hard to the script. You know? okay. Yeah, what? there were a few instances of um, of just capturing fly on the walls, real customer interactions, but for the most part, it was all it was, it was very scripted. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah, tell us what um, what it's like to work with these guys. How did you how did you work <laughs> together? I mean, did you, when when you came on board, was Lydia pretty? She was set. You kind of or did you kind of develop her together? Um, well, on the page, she's pretty much open for interpretation because okay. she's. I mean, we don't know anything about her, mm -hmm. where she's coming from. She sort of just appears the mm -hmm. same way all the other customers do. Mm -hmm. And so that was, yeah, that was fun to figure out how basically work moment to moment to build this person. To figure her out. Yeah. Yeah. And we shot an order, which I think helped oh, a lot. Yeah, thanks. That's great. That's a nice luxury of being kind of in one, yeah. like, pretty much one location. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's really unusual. Um, so Noel and Lydia are both quite damaged people, kind of trying to find their way back to happiness. I don't know if that's the right or content, contentedness. Um, did is that what drew you to them, or how did you how did you find? I don't know what I'm trying to ask. Um, how did you decide to create these particular characters? Um. Um, I guess I just want to deal with someone who was kind of sacrificing themselves for the, you know, for a holiday or for the use mm -hmm. of others. Um, and yeah, I thought someone who sells Christmas trees kind of really fit into that. Yeah. Especially if you give them like some, a little bit of dark, a little bit of dark side, you know, melancholy. Yeah. But I wanted to, I wanted to hit a happy note at the end. Uh -huh. I just wanted it to be, you know, a struggle to get there. I love that family with the kids. Were they just like oh, a real yeah. family? Yeah, they're just they, a real family. Yeah. It's, a family yeah. it's so beautiful that yeah. that scene. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And the and the last the scene was time. actually because I never worked with kids before. Uh -huh. it's, I mean, it's a challenge. <laughs> and uh, it was that scene was a lot of fun. And they were German. Yeah, <laughs> German kids. They got in a fight. I think like mid scene, <laughs> and then like poked the other kids and started crying. <laughs> it was just like oh my goodness. Um, I want to. He's come, wrap, tell me wrap up. I. You've shown some smarts by rounding up a top-notch DP, Sean Price Williams, and and editor Robert Green. Did you know those guys already, or was that? Yeah, so I um, I met them. I used to work at a company called Fourth Row Films, uh -huh. um, which uh, Robert was the editor there and edited all the docs, and Sean shot a lot of them. So that's mm -hmm. how I met them, and they met uh, working at Kim's Video Store like back in the day. Oh, awesome. um, and our old boss Doug Tirol had found Sean, and then Sean hired Robert. Um, yeah, so I, I I think Sean and I had talked about this maybe three years before. Before we actually came to shoot it, so mm. we went pretty, pretty early. I loved Robert's movie this year too. That oh, actress, it's incredible it's actress. Amazing. It's yeah. Um, all right. So I had more, more questions. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you're expecting from this week. Is your premiere today? Yes. Yeah, okay. A couple hours. You've been here before with, with film. Have you been yeah, here before with film? Times, yeah. A couple times. Yeah. So you kind of know the ropes, or is it different every time? I don't feel as though. I've have any more of an advantage than anybody else. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just kind of rolling with it. Yeah, exactly. Is this your first time here? Yeah. Charles? yeah. So, what do you expect? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm really, ex it's cool to show it on Friday because we only got in, you know, Kentucky got in like last night at like midnight. So, uh -huh. um, kind of just hitting the, you know, the ground running. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were, Kentucky was out here a couple, well, two years ago for Aim the Body. Was it Aim the Body yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I don't know what we're expecting. I think we just uh, take it step by step. Initially, we just want people to like the movie and just um, uh, appreciate the atmosphere and the setting and the uh, hopefully, hopefully performances and just um, 
Yeah. Ooh, they're cheering yeah, for you already. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a really uh, neat film, and I, I hope people respond to it. I think I just really responded to the quietness yeah. and the, and it just made you kind of think and really get to know these people. I think it was beautifully shot and just it's lovely. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, so thanks you guys. Good luck. Yeah, thanks so Have much. Fun. All right. Appreciate it.